Welcome to The Great Debate, where today we are talking about the question of, about, of Hayao Miyazaki, uh, the, the great legend of anime, and the question of, will we ever get another Hayao Miyazaki? And to be clear, um, I'm not asking, will there be somebody else who makes exactly the same kind of films as Hayao Miyazaki? Obviously not, right? That would be silly to ask. Um, what I'm asking is, will we get another anime director who has a similar impact to Hayao Miyazaki, right? Um, what Hayao Miyazaki did that folks like, like Satoshi Kon and Anno and others did not is that he elevated and escalated the reach of anime through his movies, i.e. more people watched anime and a wider variety of people watched anime as a result of Hayao Miyazaki's movies. He moved anime closer to the mainstream, in other words. Um, you know, certainly Arno found fans, and there are people who were not f fans of anime and then saw Evangelion and, you know, were blown away. But generally speaking, that, that's not the pattern. Um, but Miyazaki had this strong, th this strong impact, this very clear impact. There, there are lots and lots and lots of people who are not into anime and saw Kiki's Delivery Service, and we're like, I like that, I want, I want to see more of that. So the question is, will we get another pe person like that? Somebody who is um, pushing the popularity of the medium with the general audience, right? with the mass audience. Um, and this is important because it, it's, it's true both in Japan and in America, right? Like, um, you know, in Japan, people who didn't go to see anime movies went to see Hayao Miyazaki movies. And we see similar thing over here in America, but was, there's this idea in Japan that even where in Japan there is this certain prejudice against anime as being kind of juvenile, um, and not that anime doesn't sometimes justify that view, um, but Miyazaki is able to kind of overcome that view, even in a country that's kind of exposed to a lot of anime. Whereas in America, he became a lot of people's kind of first introduction in. Right. So the question is, is that ever going to happen again? Can we get another person like Miyazaki? And it's complicated because, partially, it's a matter of time. Right? It's, it's a matter of time period. It's a matter of the fact that Miyazaki was working in the 80s and the 90s. Uh, and the two, I mean, he's been working since. But his, his core period, I would argue, is like late 80s to late 90s. Um, it, uh, we'll say... Um, so, no, we'll say 84 to, what, 91, 92 is when Spirited Away came out. So, we'll say, basically, those two decades, from Nausicaa to Spirited Away, right, are those, are, are his prime time. And during that time, anime was in this weird place. It was certainly super popular in Japan, but it was turning into this medium that was either aimed at kids or aimed at this otaku demographic. And he broke that open and said, no, you know, a 40-year-old housewife will want to watch my movies. And then in America, you had this thing where there were lots of different people out there, lots of folks who had, you know, yes, you know, some or no exposure to anime. And people were like, you, you've got to watch this thing called Castle in the Sky. And you got to watch Spirit Away. And that got them, Adam Savage would be a good example of this in sort of the celebrity world, where he, he is not an anime fan, but oh my gosh, is he into, into Miyazaki, right? Um, so the thing is, you know, it's going to be hard to replicate that in the future, right? We're not going to be in those same situations where, um, you know, in, in the 80s and 90s, anime really hadn't. Um, anime was starting to hit over here as a subculture, um, but the general per the general person on the street now knows what anime is. They're familiar with that art style, right? Um, but there's always room for a big hit, right? There's always room for a George Lucas or a James Cameron um, or whoever, somebody who just makes the next blockbuster that everybody goes to see. And it becomes kind of this, you know, um, the safe bet, 
really, which is what Miyazaki's become. People feel safe watching a Miyazaki movie. Not even so much Ghibli films. Over in Japan, you know, Ghibli films not by Miyazaki get watched by, you know, half or a third as many people because they don't know if it's going to be, like, quite the family film thing, and often it isn't, right? Um, so understanding that, obviously, we can't predict the future, which means that there should be space for another Hayao Miyazaki. The question then would be, why not? Why couldn't there be another person who busts it open, who opens it up? For that to happen, they're going to have to make a certain kind of anime. And this is what's interesting, is that we're starting to see anime directors trying to do that. With Moro Hosoda, clearly, his films are those safe family bets, more or less. And you know, whether or not he's hitting that you know, and, and be turning into that, or whether, whether he'll ever hit sort of Miyazaki levels of approbation and success. It's working in that sense. People are going to see those movies and he's making them, right? Um, but that implies that it's not simply a matter of making a family film. We need something else to push anime into the mainstream, so to speak. Now, that's a word that gets thrown around a lot. I don't think anime is ever going to become mainstream um, in the sense that, like, everybody goes to see anime movies every weekend, right? Like, that's just, that's a fantasy. Um, there are vanishingly few things in the world that reach that level of just mundanity, where just everybody consumes this thing. Um, but we've certainly seen that, I mean, I've certainly seen that in my lifetime. Anime has gone from a thing that the average American did not know the definition of that word 20 years ago, and now they do, right? So it is expanding. That is an excellent question, Hemhoki. Could the next Miyazaki come out of China? That's a fascinating question. That is certainly possible. Because China has resources. China could very quickly... There's a great segment on Top Gear, the British um, motoring show, your car show, where they reviewed this uh, uh, Chinese car and you know compared it to bmws and mercedes and so forth and it was it was certainly not up to that skill level it was not up to par you know it was a it was a, a an okay car and they ended the segment by saying now here's the thing the best car to come out of china five years ago is this and they pointed to a you know this this car that came out five years ago and it was a, a complete mess like it was a laughing stock and China had gone from that to, you know, not as good as the best in the world, but definitely a, you know, uh, you know, close, definitely, you know, edging into that ballpark um, in five years. So China could absolutely marshal the resources, or I should say Chinese, you know, creators could marshal the resources to create those big budget you know, things that appeal to audiences. The problem, it's going to, it's going to, they're going to happen there. And this is partly a cultural issue that we have. Um, it's going to be very hard for a Chinese director to consistently make something that appeals to a Western audience. But a Chinese director could very well be the Hayao Miyazaki to China. In other words, they could very well make Hayao Miyazaki you know, massively, not to make Hayao Miyazaki, but to make anime massively successful and to greatly expand its, its influence in China, in, say, India and Korea. And that's a bigger market than us. So that would be, you know, that would be an even bigger story than somebody who becomes a Hayao Miyazaki in the sense of what Hayao Miyazaki did. Right? We are not the entire world. So that is how that, you know, that works. Uh, Jay in the chat asks, do you think anime has become more of a pop culture staple? It has absolutely become more of a pop culture staple. It is not a, you know, big pop culture staple. It has definitely moved further in that direction than, say, 20 years ago. I mean, no question. You know, go into a Hot Topic. Go into a Target and, you know, 
look down the aisle of how many DVDs have anime characters on them. It's not a lot, but you will you will see, you know, more than zero. <laughs> and that has definitely, you know, changed. Uh, video games. You know, see how many anime-based or anime-inspired or anime-style video games are right out there on the shelves. Remember, you know, maybe, you guys maybe not remember, back in the day when a JRPG got brought over to here to America, they would redo the box art so that it wouldn't have all these anime characters on the front because uh, that wouldn't sell, right? But that has definitely, that has definitely changed and shifted. Um, so yeah, th definitely that, that whole thing has, has changed. And I think Miyazaki is, is part of the reason for that, is that he created things that people could safely consume, you know, pe people could rely on and could understand in that sense. Yeah, you remember uh, Jay? So yeah, absolutely. That that, that has that has changed. Um, so obviously, and and to what we were saying before, we can't answer this question definitively because that would mean having a crystal ball. I can't predict the future. Neither can you. By the way, um, much as we all wish we could, um, and that's how that goes, right? Um, I I think though it is possible. It's unlikely. Um, it's going to be very hard because the future is not going to be what it was when Miyazaki was around. And the future is going to have very different forces at work and different requirements at work. And it may, again, be a matter of appealing to a very different market than it did before. A very different public. Right? We will see. Uh, but who knows? 